Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Rosham Joe Paints. As always, my name is Joe, and today it's going to look a little bit different, sound a little bit different, feel a little bit different, but don't worry. I still have no plan whatsoever, and I'm just going to kind of be winging it as I go through painting a Hobgrot Slitta. I think it's Slitta if it's a singular guy. I'm not going to be painting multiple, so we'll see. Uh, from Dominion, and I uh, haven't painted any Age of Sigmar yet, so... Uh, at least not on this channel. I was brought into the hobby with the uh, the release of Age of Sigmar 1.0 six years ago, however, however long ago that was. Um, but then, you know, started painting a lot of the 40k stuff too, but now I'm going back to, to a little bit of Age of Sigmar, and uh, yeah, we'll see how I do. With that, roll the hopefully shorter, more helpful intro. So here's the guy we're going to be working with today, and you'll notice he does not have a helm. Let me show you real quick. This is the one I painted that is his, uh, his uh, the identical twin here. And in the kit, you get the version, or you get to pick whether you want a head um, or not. I think this is a total of three pieces. The, the other guy was actually the very first one I painted, and I chose the helmet because I don't like painting bare heads, but I also don't want to have the exact same model, so that's why I'm now painting this guy without a helmet. Uh, I think it's a total of three pieces when you put them together. I chose just to glue them all together because realistically it's the head that gets pushed on and this front chest piece, I think with like the leg kind of just snap into place. Um, so threw a little bit of glue in there, plastic glue, just to get it uh, stuck together so I couldn't change my mind later. And uh, yeah, I'll deal with, you know, finicky little spots here and there to try to get into the the cracks and crevices but for the most part you know did the same thing with this guy and you really you'd have to be really looking um which i do sometimes but from up here well you'll never see it so um you'll the second thing you might notice is that the the color is not that yellowy orangey color that the other um hobgrot uh, like the box art is done in um, i wanted to have it more of a green skin color which might be incorrect for lore, but I liked the look. Uh, so what I did is I looked through the Citadel, um, the Citadel paint app and, uh, just picked a green color that it kind of looked yellowy and greeny. So there you go. Uh, I think it actually, it's the, um, the great unclean one. I think it's part of his flesh. So, um, and what's nice is it is a base coat and then a lot of dry brushing. So these are actually pretty quick to paint. I've painted up four of them. Uh, so far and I have enjoyed every minute of it. So that's not usual and usually when it comes down to these like, uh, you know, one wound type uh, Horde uh, Horde units. I'm I have I still haven't finished the Necrons from Indominus nor have I finished the Assault Intercessors just because there's so many of them and I just lose interest. But these guys for whatever reason, they're uh, they're not bad and it's not just because they're small because the Plague Rats um, those were those were a pain in the butt too, even though it's only twenty of them. So, what we're gonna do first is we are going to um, grab some primer and spray it black. I am out. Well, I'm not out. I'm reserving my Citadel spray primer for the rest of the Necrons. Uh, that's the Chaos Black. So we're gonna start with just a Vallejo um, black primer through an airbrush. If you don't have that, paint it on. It works. Uh, or you know, grab your. Um, chaos black and that works too you can also start with white but because uh, it's all glued together there's going to be some parts underneath that i'm not going to be able to get with the brush and i'd rather have it be black and hard to see than you know uh that corax white and just showing uh my shame so that said let's move on to priming this and then we will uh get some base coat done so i gave the primer a little bit of extra time to dry simply because i wanted to make sure that the um slow drying medium that I put into the airbrush did not end up um, making this kind of tacky. When I first brought it off, I could almost feel like there was still a little bit of uh, paint drying there. So I let it dry overnight. Um, I don't have to do that with the Chaos Black, so just heads up. Uh, anyways, now we are going to use the Zandri Dust to um, get us our first portion, you know, in order to make this a 
yellowy green type skin, we may as well start with a yellowy base coat. So that is what I'm doing with Xandra Dust here. Just thinned down a little bit and applied it to all of the skin. The nice part here is you really don't have to be too careful um, because this is the absolute first base coat you're putting on. So no matter what else you hit, that's all going to get covered up later. From here, um, it will be a little bit of dry brushing and we are covering the majority of the model with this Sandra dust and the preceding or uh, following dry brushes. So pretty much as soon as you're done with this step, your model is going to be very close to done, but that doesn't mean you can't, you know, slack off. You got to be careful because after that, I will be putting on lots of other colors and the, um, I don't want to mess up basically my completed skin tones. So anyways, let's go ahead and finish off all of the skin. This may require, and I say may, but it will require a couple of coats since we're using Xander dust over a black primer, but, um, you kind of get where we're going here, I think. Yeah. All right, let me finish this up. We will come back and we will shade this skin. With the Xandri dust now complete, I'm going to pop open some Athonian Camo Shade. And because it is not Nuln Oil or Agrax Earth Shade, which I use all the time, I probably won't spill it. Normally that would be something reserved for the ones that I need constantly. So uh, yeah, I'll try to not to spill this one. We'll see what happens. Um, so I'm basically going to put the Athonian Camo Shade over... Yep. Yep. Turns out everything. So this is going to add a little bit of green, a little bit of dark into those recesses and, um, you know, set a good, uh, I don't know, set a good word. That means something. Wow. I cannot think of a word to say here. That's not, it's not unusual, I guess. Anyways, what we're doing here is we're, we're kind of using our shade here. And that will give us a little bit of green, and then we'll follow it up with some Ogren Camo, which will give us more green, and then we'll do some Flayed One Flesh, which will give us more yellow, and it'll be like magic, because it'll turn out exactly as I wanted it to. But for some, unlike, <laughs> unlike these words that I'm trying to say, which I have no, God, I just got nothing right now, it just dried up on me. Anyways, un, you know, speaking of drying up, make sure you're watching out for your shade as it dries, like you can see in here and the neck that's far too much so we're going to just tap our somewhat dry brush in there and go over the back just don't let it pool all in one spot and you'll be fine i don't know if i will i'm going to go find a thesaurus or just a general dictionary so i can learn words again and then when i return maybe i'll be able to explain how to dry brush you know i probably won't be able to with the Athonian camo shade now completed, I'm going to dry brush some Ogren camo onto this guy. And what I'm doing is I've got my brush. Uh, we're using a dry brushing method here, I'm trying to go best I can against the grain. You could tell right on that spot. I don't know if you saw that way too much uh, paint on the brush. Luckily, this is not the last of the shades or the uh, layers we're going to do on a dry brush here. But you want to make sure you don't use a whole lot of paint on your dry brush because it's easier to just say, you know what? I think that spot needs a little bit more than it is to say, ah, and have to start over again. So um, you can use circular motions like this, counterclockwise, clockwise, whatever you want to do. I don't know if that depends on the rotation of earth, how well the coverage will be, but overall what you're looking to do is you're looking to hit all of the skin without getting too much of the low spots. Now, once you feel like you're, you know, you've used all the paint on your brush, just keep going because you probably haven't because that's what dry brush just looks like. You could just keep going back and forth over the spot and eventually you'll say, oh, look at that. It actually brightened up a little bit. But, you know, when you do feel like you've actually used it up, go back, get your little, I'm using just a paper towel here and make sure you knock most of that back off. I, I do it to the point of where I barely see any coming off on the actual um, paper towel. And then I go back here to the model and wow, look at that. Look how much is actually coming off still. So, you know, make sure you're uh, just being careful with how much is on your brush. Um, Cause you don't want to have to do what I did on a couple of these guys. And that is to start over. 
because you ended up just basically putting a whole glob of paint on there. So let's finish up the Ethonian, ah, oh, Ethonian camo shade. Good thing we already finished that stuff. Let's finish up the Ogren camo and move on. The Ogren camo now complete. Our dry brush washed and once again dried. We're gonna take some Flayed One Flesh. And what I'm gonna do is, Flayed One Flesh is kind of a very transparent color, but we just still wanna, don't wanna overpower the whole model with it. So I'm gonna be mostly with the Ogren camo. I was kind of going up and down and left and right and diagonal and all over the place because I just wanted to hit every spot without getting into the crevices. For the Flayed One, I kinda want it more directional. I wanna be, you know, on the, the higher portions where the light might be hitting first, so like his ears, his eyebrows, his cheekbones. I still want to bring a little bit of yellow into this model, but I don't want to like, I'm not going to bother trying to get into, you know, underneath where the legs are just because, you know, um, it's not likely that a lot of light would be hitting him there. So the brighter or more pale uh, portion of this would not be seen. Now, of course, the top of his head, is going to be probably mostly yellow and you'll see sometimes you get this little um you see it it's like a little divot there um so what i might do is i might just come back with a little bit uh, with like a layer brush and fill that in very 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 neatly um or maybe i'll just continue dry brushing like this for 45 minutes or so and then eventually it'll all come out but you get the idea. I'm trying to be, again, even more light than I was with the Ogren camo. And um, just going, I'm only, I'm only actually, you can't, probably can't tell. I'm pressing against the model here. And when I go back up, I'm not actually pressing against the model. I'm just kind of, you know, like dab, dab, dab like that. I don't know. That's not a dab. But when you're done with it, hopefully you will have, or hopefully I will have, um, what I'm looking for here, which is a little bit of, a little bit of yellowy, almost like a glaze over the top with a dry brush, if that's even possible. I don't know where my other ones went, or I'd show you. Oh, oh there's some right there. So like this guy right here, you can see he's got mostly green, but there is just that, that little bit of yellow. So let's compare him to this guy. You can tell not quite there yet. So I got a little bit more ways to go to uh, yellowy pale out. However, however that sounds. Pale, palish, yellowish, greenish, but I'm going to keep going over this until I'm happy. And again, using less um, is way, way more better than using a bunch all at once and losing all control. There you go. So once you're done with this, you can put your, uh, your dry brush away for all of a couple seconds because I'll probably be doing that with the metals too. Okay, so... Uh, with the skin now complete, I'm going to move on to a little bit of silver metallics. And for that, I will be using lead belcher. Now, the lead belcher is going to be going on things such as, well, the silver metallics. Done. Step completed. Um, but if you're interested in more specifics than that, it would be for these side armor panels here. And I'll go back and, of course, finish those later. It's not while I'm talking about it. The chest piece, uh, chest armor piece. Some of them will also have these um, like armbands. Just be careful when you're painting this because you don't want to actually go into the skin that you just took so much time and effort to dry brush at an extremely fast rate. And remember, there's 20 of these guys. So if you mess up a little bit, it'll probably just get lost in a sea of, of them. As always, if you are doing this for some sort of painting competition, why are you watching me? Go paint because you're probably way better because you're in a competition. But uh, regardless, yeah, so we got that. We got, of course, the other one here, the other little stabby, stabby knife job. Um, where else might we put some of this? So we got the wrist, the wrist. We got the, the, the blades, the arm panels, uh, the grenades. That's right. In Age of Sigmar, apparently they've added grenades. I never knew that there were grenades. I figured that might be a dwarf thing, if anything. But, um, but here you go. This... Uh, this little piece back here is like a sulfurous or what do they call it? I don't know what the thing went, but it's basically it's a grenade. So we're going to paint the head, the explodey bit here with a little bit of lead belcher. And I think for this model, that would be it. You got to look, uh, some of the other guys, they're going to have helmets. Obviously like this guy right here has a helmet. So he would have a little bit, uh, a little more. So other than that, very simple step, 
paint the metals, and you're done. What we're going to do is now worry about corn red and getting it onto all of these little ropes. And uh, I had originally, on the first model that I painted, I'd painted like the belt straps and then the, the straps up here in, uh, in a little bit of brown, like scrag brown. And it looked okay, but what I didn't like was having to try and figure out like when all these start tangling together back here. I want to be able, you know, again, lots, lots of lots and lots of them. And also me being lazy. I want to basically just be able to paint over this and go down here and be done. So um, we're going to go around the whole model, find any of these um, little rope deals, which is pretty much uh, his belt. A lot of them droop down a little bit. There's the one around his neck and they all fasten to all of these little armor panels. So just keep an eye out. Obviously it doesn't matter if you hit that because we haven't painted it yet. So when you're painting in here, that's fine, but up against the lead belcher, just be careful. So we will do this. And then I think those two being done, we can then, yeah, we can go ahead and do known oil or, you know what, let's just finish with all the base coats and you can see what it looks like. And then we'll do a little bit of known oil, a little bit of Agrax or shade, and then um, move on from there. All right, we're done with the corn red. And as you can see, there's also a little dots in his eyes there. Um, but yeah, mostly just the straps back and forth, back and forth, back and front. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take a little bit of Balthazar gold, and there is the these uh, square armor panels, which appear to be more decorative than in... Um, I don't know. I don't know why they appear to be more decorative. I guess because they have a little bit of a kind of a rune in the center of them, and uh, they're not as jagged. I don't know. That's what I'm calling I'm going with decorative. Plus, they're also... You know, they are also on the standards, and of course, there's not one nearby. But this guy right here, you see this this whole standard would be that uh, bronze. Some of them also, I think on the drummer, you got it on his back. So just, you know, those guys right there. Um, so not a whole lot about this gold. The other place we're going to put it is these little, like, diamond-shaped pieces at the end of the weapon. These can be silver, too, if you want. It just kind of depends on what you're going for. And I ended up painting some of them silver and some of them bronze. And then I was like, eh, I'm going to make them all bronze. So, so there you go. And then I also, this, this, uh, the ring that goes around the front. And I'm sure there might be a name if you know anything about daggers or weapons or anything of the sort. I don't. So I'm just going to call it the ring, but there's a couple of those, you know, around here and right there. So there you go. Now, since we're already here, may as well take a few seconds and point out another very minor step. And that is using a bit of Abaddon Black and uh, yeah, hitting this itty bitty little portion right there. You can barely even see. That is just the, um, what I am calling like the weapon handle wrap. You know, as if they had wrapped a um, a leather strap around it. And again, back here, he's got he's got such a good grip on that. I don't even know if I'm going to bother. Um, but sometimes the uh, the models will have. And again, I don't have any. Yeah, here you go. So some of the models will have something like this, where you can see the entire piece of it, if it's not blurry. But I got new new graphics, same blurry. Anyways. Um, so like this would end up being Abaddon Black. So I think that's the only place I actually use black on this model. Anyways, so finish up the bronze and then um, we'll come in. Last step will be a little bit of, you know what, might as well do it now. What better time than now? A uh, time when I was ready to do it. That's not the point. Um, Xandra Dust. And Xandra Dust is going to go back over and um, gosh, this is just going to be tough. I'm trying to get it to focus um, on the teeth, mainly these two big like tusk like teeth that are coming out the front. If you can see there's two little teeth inside, you could just basically though cover the whole inside of the mouth with that Xander dust because we're going to go in there with a shade and that'll darken up anything that isn't a tooth. And of course, the other guy. Now, the other place besides the teeth on this guy for a little touch up of Xander dust is going to be his nails. Um, both on his hands and on the feet. The feet is 
a much easier thing to show. So I'll start with that, but there you go. Painting your toenails and you know, manicures, manicures are not just, I was going to say for women, but this, you know, it's not even just a man woman thing. This is, you know, it's not just for people. If you are a, a cruel boy, some sort of destruction orc, you can get a, you can get a pedicure manicure. You know? I'm not, I'm not stopping you. Um, but anyways, also we can go back and again on the hands for the most part, oh, let me see if I can. So like you could see, he's got a little bit of a nail right there. And then I'll just drag this across the front. And again, we'll come in here with some of that on a lot of these guys though, you may not even see it. So, um, so you can choose to, or you can choose to not. Um, so those are a couple steps now that you don't want to come back with the Browns. So that's, there you go. I do do that. We've got to recap everything. You got the Balthazar gold, the Xandri dust and the Abaddon black real quick. And then we are going to finish up with a couple Browns and then we'll shade everything and then start highlighting. All right. So now to finish off the base coats, we're going to put a little bit of Rhinox hide over the, uh, his shorts back here. You can't actually see these on the front. Um, there's just a little bit on either side, typically of the, the ropes here. And then I do like to kind of just drag a little bit underneath just so the, that, that, like that bend around his, his butt gets, uh, gets filled in there so that it's, it's not just like brown and then all of a sudden turns green as if he had ripped his loincloth or uh, whatever you call this piece. Anyways, that's not the point. It's not what I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about the Rhinox hide. And now we are switching over to Dryad Bark. And on this guy, Dryad Bark is only going to be used on this, this little tiny section of weapon handle or haft or shaft. Um, and that is because I want to pretend it's wood and not just metal. I had painted these metal originally, but then you notice there's this giant nail that kind of goes through the whole thing as if it was nailed on. So it makes more sense that it would be a grenade kind of uh, just hammered, hammered and nailed on to a wood shaft. So that's not very exciting, but you know, I will use that dryad bark on other things like this actual look. See, see the nail. That's what I'm talking about right there. Um, but yeah, like I'll use dryad bark on this too, and then we'll come back and this will show up more like actual wood. It's got some, uh, some textures. You can see when I was dry brushing that actually picked up a little bit of the, uh, the texture, but anyways, I'll come back to that later. Cause I'm not painting this guy right now. I'm painting this guy. I'm painting Hobgrot Slitta, not Slitta's. Oh, and I guess I was done. Yeah. So it was just that one part. And then again, uh, Rhinox hide, dryad bark, and then, uh, yeah, we'll come back. We'll do some shades. So we've completed all the base coats and now we're going to start applying some shades uh, to everything except the skin. Just try to be really, 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 really careful. Um, and this Nuln Oil will go on to the uh, silver metallics. So that is the armor panels as well as the weapons. And um, also I'm going to go ahead and use this to darken down the red of the ropes can't really get into that eye with anything small enough. Um, although I probably could, but again, this is a tinier model and it's, um, it's not a character or anything. So I'm going to just put a little bit of red in there and probably not come back and touch it because the more I would touch it, the more I'd probably hit the eyebrows. So, um, so back to what we are going to do and not what we're not going to do. We are going to finish up using non oil over all of these as well as the um, thing, what do you call it? Grenade. Basically, anywhere you paint it silver, you're gonna to wanna to use it uh, here as well. Just be careful again, up against that skin. And then I think that's it. I think that's all I used it for. So yeah, do known oil. I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll shade the other parts with Agarx Earth Shade. And then we will begin to highlight. All right, and to finish up, the rest of the shading we are going to be using agrax earth shade and this will be for all of the bronze pieces that we did earlier darken them down a little bit here um when you get or if you get i don't know it depends on if you paint like i do and you get this little um dot inside the center there of the weapons you try to just use your brush 
and uh, did you see that? Basically, inside of here, a little puddle formed. Um, just to knock it out with your brush. If you can't, what I, you can also do is put your finger behind it because you don't want to um, blow all of the shade onto another part of your model, like an airbrush, or homemade airbrush of sorts. But basically, just go like this and whoosh, you know give it a give it a quick dust off. Um, but obviously using your brush is much cleaner. Um, we're also going to use this on the brown portions, which are the shorts here. Even going underneath just like that and over the top. And there's a little line right there in the middle. And um, the uh, wood, any sort of wood handles that might be on any of these guys, along with, again, that bronze right there. And this bronze over here, yada, yada. See, like this one. I'm now going to do what I told you to not do. Um, this guy right here, you can see it. See, it's full of stuff. Dry your brush off and tap, tap, tap. Is it on? I can't tell. Yes. Okay, so there you go. What a win. Uh, last spot for the Agrax Earthshade is just going to be on the nails and this just go over the tops of them again most of this stuff is just going to get covered up by um well it might depends on what you're basing but the way i'm basing it uh, this is going to be a very muddy place that he's walking through so those you may not even see and again on the hands here it's such a tiny little detail but you know what you want to make it work and then the teeth i do actually this is kind of what makes the whole face for me is you get a nice nice coverage of the teeth and then you come back and you make them pop out from the rest of the face it ends up looking pretty good so you know i'm pretty i'm kind of subpar at painting faces but you know you get something like this and you know immediately you can see the teeth kind of stick out and that's actually not even highlighted yet um that's just a um that's that's this step right here so as soon as we paint those teeth it'll it'll show up that much better so i'm going to give this a little while to dry then we're going to come back and do some highlights. Shades are now dry, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of Rune Fang Steel, and I'm using a kind of a thin-ish dry brush. I'm hoping that I'll have a little more control because I don't want to hit the skin or any of the red or all that, but we're going to come in here and I'm just going to super lightly just kind of pull down and then maybe try to hit the edges just a little bit just to give these high spots a little bit of shine. I don't want it to be like a shiny brand new piece of armor. Um which, you know, if you want to also use the, uh, what do you call it, Agrax Earthshade on these panels, you could. That would make them a little bit, look a little bit dirtier. I, for whatever reason, chose Null Null, you know, and I think it looks okay because I'm leaving big splotches of it in places. Uh, also, instead of going back and forth across the weapons, I've been kind of just trying to pull just the edge. And uh, you could see even just doing that, I am getting a little bit of that center line or you could go completely like parallel with it and just try to just try to highlight that line or come back and actually do just like an edge highlight maybe. But um, this is good. This rune fang goes over all of the silver metallics and signifies the finishing of said silver metallics. And um, yeah, just trying to avoid make thing, making them like super bright again because after all, these guys are supposed to be in a swamp, at least. I think so. I don't know. I didn't read the book. I tried to, but I fell asleep. And that's nothing against the book. It's just I, I don't, I can't read books. I just fall asleep. So now that you know that, let's move on to the next step. Next step, we are going to just take a little bit of Psychorax bronze. And same deal, we're just going to brush gently against the uh the raised edges of the bronze pieces now if you don't trust yourself uh, and i don't i'm just man i'm just lazy my my sycorax is also or sycorax my my bronze that i'm using is also like dried up almost so it's almost like it's a dry paint at this point so i'm gonna have to just do the best i can and you know i'm, I'm acting like a dry brush here but you can edge highlight this just just as easily Get on the back side here again, just kind of against the raised portions, and watch out for hitting any sort of skin as you're doing this. I mean, this this is fine, but not up. You know, you don't want to do this because you have to do it all over again. 
then you'll have to start the video over again. And man, I just, nobody wants that. Anyways. All right. So the bronze is now done. Cool. All right. Next step will be red. And I have to get some paint ready for that. So I'm going to do a transition. We are on the final stretch here. We only have the browns, reds, and that is it to, uh, to finish up here. So we're going to start off with the ropes, which can be a time consuming process if you want it to be. Um, or it could be, you know, simple and, and easy. So we want to make sure, um, I'm going to do more of an edge highlight here. So I want to make sure like I don't have a whole lot of paint on my brush. Um, and I don't want it to be flowing super fast. You can go and like, like these raised lines here, I'm just going to try to tap thusly and you can see I've already got a little paint. I'm moving on. My goal here is to not make this super bright, kind of like I was doing with the rest of the highlights or the, even the dry brushing. But I do want to just try and call call out, if you will, some of the uh, some of the texture of it. So we're doing kind of a dry brush, but a way more controlled one, and not even a dry brush. So we forget all that I said. We're just edge highlighting. But um, you can choose as much of this as you want to do. Is kind of where I was going with that. Now that I think about it, maybe if I thought about it before, I could have explained that before. Um, for these diagonal ones, I'm going to just try. We'll see if it works. And yeah, mostly. Again, we're not trying to fill in the, we're not, we're not trying to brighten it up. We just want to, ex, uh, what's the word? Trying to highlight. That's what the highlights are all about. So there you go. If you have a super steady hand and a small enough brush, um, which I might have one of, I've got the brush is pretty tiny here. Make sure you get a little fine fine, fine, super fine tip on your brush. And then you can try to just tap right in the eye socket. But again, at this far away, you hardly notice and you get closer and you just see, oh, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of red there. That's kind of cool. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't try too hard to, to make anything happen in there lest you end up messing up the whole face again. Um, which side note I did, you can, if you, if you hit any of the areas, uh, like on shoulders or wherever you've been painting and the flesh gets messed up, you can go back with a little bit of the, um, Ogren camo. And, uh, if it's one of the higher areas, you can always, um, do a real thin down coat of like flayed one flesh just to, just to kind of go over and less is more just do enough so that the other color kind of blends in and goes away. Cause you don't want what you want to avoid is getting a nice, you know, if you've got this, this, you know, skin tone as you want it. And you had a little bit of red here by going over and going like with a ton of green and a ton of flayed one flesh, you may end up now having a giant spot that doesn't match the skin yet again. So, uh, less is more use super thin coats when you're doing that sort of thing. So, uh, let us go on to, to the next step. Uh, after we finish, I'll be finished the red and then we'll move on. We'll probably hit up all of the teeth really quick. Um, cause that's just a quick, uh, thing to be done with and then the browns really quick and yeah then i'm gonna base this thing and i'll be done with it so since a lot of these last colors uh, only have a very minimal amount i'm gonna cover them all in a single step and um some noteworthy stuff i think um Kitty and flesh tone could also be used um, over the top of the wise dacca red it'll brighten these ropes up even more so you'd want to use it even less more so than, or even less than on the Wazdaka reds, but I like, I like how dark they are, um, when they look like this. So, uh, right now I'm going to use a little bit of a shabby bone and I'm going to basically highlight just a little portion near the top and then down this sharp edge of the teeth again to go inside the mouth here, just barely, maybe even less paint would have been better. But now that I've started it up, I got one of them surprise myself uh let's see if i can get the other tooth or maybe only have one tooth if i screw it up enough anyways we're moving on from this it's teeth so highlight the teeth uh highlight the nails also with the ushabity bone and like i said once you once you've done this we're going to use a little bit more um a little bit more later but now you can already see maybe hopefully that the teeth are more pronounced um and stand out from the flayed one flesh we're going to come back with a little bit of screaming skull uh, right now and the same step or rather the same method would be used on 
the nails down here as well as the fingernails. Um, but I'm not going to show that because it's the same thing as doing this tooth right here. So the very top is where I want that screen to skull to make it really, uh, really kind of just shiny and uh, as if he's looking to chomp down on something. So there you go. Next step, we're going to come back and you are going to go to the back here. Oh, there it is. And we're going to use Gorthor Brown. And I'm just going to try and give myself a nice clean line right here. Like that, just as an edge highlight. And some of these, you can see these little stitchings in here. So I'm just going to tap that stitching right there and right there. And if I'm feeling brave, which I kind of am at the moment, but I need a little less paint. I'm just going to use the very pointy tip and, you know, as if, because that's, that's where the stitch would have went through. Um, so just highlight that little ridge, the little circular ridge that goes around that stitch there. And then, of course, we're going to come over here on the wood and give a nice, simple, easy edge highlight. It's nice to finish on a very easy edge highlight, but I, you know, we got, we got nails to do, so I'm not quite done, but I'm close. So there you go. So we're going to put a little a couple, a couple highlights onto the wood there. Maybe go over these once more just to make them stand out a little bit. And there we go. I got to come back to finish it up, but overall, we're basically done. So the next step you will see, well, actually there is no next step. The next step is to base it. However you would normally base it. I'm going to be using a thing and it disappeared on me. Hang on. I'll reach for it. It's way up here. But, um, so I'm using this right now rather than a Citadel product. I've moved over, uh, just because it's a giant container and you know, there you go. It's 1350, but it's going to last me a lot longer than something like, uh, some of the other normal paint pots. And I figured I'm going to have a lot of them and I wanted to try something that looked dirty and mucky. And I'm going to run over here real quick. Oh God, I lost them. Hang on, I'll find them. <coughs> Sorry about that. I had to interrupt myself, but yeah, so this, uh, dark mud ground, a MIG 2104 from ammo MIG, him and his. Yeah. Um, pretty cool that, uh, that's the, what it's supposed to look like. And yeah, it basically, I mean, this is, this is fully dry, but it looks like it's still just wet and goopy. And I, this is not, um, what do you call it? It's not covered in any sort of gloss at all. So I just put that on there, let it be nice and muddy. And it just looks like wet, muddy ground. So there you go. So that's all that's going to happen on these guys. I'm going to put a little basing in here. We will finish this guy up and I will show you what it looks like, even though you pretty sure you already know. And with that, we come to the part of the episode where I get to say thank you for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed what I've done. And if you didn't, well, then at least gave you an example of what not to do, maybe. I don't know. But uh, hopefully you got something out of it. If nothing else, just uh, pass some time. Who knows? Uh, as always, if you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and like, subscribe if you're not already. And uh, I've got Reddit and more so Instagram than Reddit, but, you know, got both of those things going for me. Hooray. And uh, with that, I guess we will try out the new ending screen and see how that goes. See ya.